Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I think we're literally doing the longest empties video I've ever done. Hi Rex. Hi buddy. I gotta film. <laughs> so I'm in a different place. I'm actually in our living room in front of our bookshelves because I knew this was going to be a long video. I've been pushing off doing this empties video, and it's like a gloomy day outside and I've already done a lot of work today so what I wanted to do was just like sit down and get comfy like on the floor and just go through everything because I have a basket and two bags full of empties and it's, it's gonna take us a bit to go through all of them so I wanted to make sure I was comfy and I thought it, it might be a, a you know a change of scenery could be nice for you guys and for me and since I'm on the floor little Rex might come and join us or squeak every now and then <laughs> He brought me his pig. And he's bringing me his other pig. Thank you. All right, so we literally have a ton to go through. So get a snack, get comfy, put me on, you know, 1.75 speed and listen like a podcast. Let, let's get into it. So I already pre-separated my empties. In this big bag, we have all the hair care empties. In this bag, we have all of the skincare empties, and the last basket has all the body care and the makeup. So I kind of want to start with the hair care, because I didn't really realize just how much hair care I really went through over the past couple of months. All right, so we got a lot in hair care. First, I'm going to talk about these two uh, dry shampoo foams from Batiste. So uh, which one did I get? I believe I got this one in PR. I got one in PR and then we actually went out and purchased another one because we liked it so much. So this is the Batiste Waterless Cleansing Foam. This is the Cleanse and Hydrate, which I believe is the one I got in PR. And then this is the Cleanse and Shine with Coconut Milk, which is the one that we went out and bought. I really have been loving uh, dry shampoo foams. I just found like for um, my curly hair, it's the best things. I can scrunch it up, which is what I like to do. I like to spray it into my hand and scrunch it up into my hair and it refreshes my curls and then also just like helps with the, the smell, which is it's a little bit odd and kind of gross to say, but you're using dry shampoo, you know, why are you using dry shampoo? Um, and then I like to like squish it into my scalp. So this is actually one of my favorite formulas that I found and I definitely will be repurchasing this at some point. Another dry shampoo that I got that I wasn't as huge a fan of, and I had this forever. It took me so long to finally get around to using it. This is the Whey Dry Shampoo Foam. And this one, it, it I didn't like it as much as the other dry shampoo foams that I've tried. And like this one was three times as expensive. So I don't know. I wasn't a huge fan. I think the Batiste ones, they're right around $8 to $10 each. And I know this Whey one was expensive. It's like $20 or $30. I wouldn't pay that much for a dry shampoo foam. Um, but I did use up the whole thing. I uh, just wasn't a huge fan and I feel like it made my curls like limp and it didn't really refresh them. It just kind of made them stringy. So not a huge fan of the Whey one. Speaking of Whey, I actually have a product here that was sent to me in PR that I really enjoyed. This is the Curl Cream. So this is a styling cream and first it smelled absolutely delightful. It smelled very flowery, almost like a perfume. It smelled so good. And I love this for styling. It was like the perfect texture. It was a white cream, but it had like almost a serum quality to it. So it was silky enough to like go through my strands and coat everything and just like hydrate really well, but it wasn't too thick. And I've seen that a couple of times with curl creams that are so thick that when I try using them with my oil or with my gels, it just kind of gets gunky and it doesn't work out that well but this was just so good and I would definitely consider purchasing this again in the future um, especially since I went through a couple of other like cream products and I wasn't as huge a fan so this is one of my favorites recently. This I also got in PR this is from All Organics and this is the tea tree and mint conditioner. Now I was sent their shampoo and PR a while ago it was like a year ago and they said they were gonna send me the shampoo and conditioner to try together and they never did so I tried the shampoo I thought it was nice because having the tea tree and the mint work on your scalp I thought it was super nice for refresh days and I, it just it felt really nice I liked the way that it felt and my it didn't really affect like my curls too much um, but I couldn't try it with the conditioner so I had no idea how they worked together six months later they sent me the conditioner <laughs> just kind of randomly like I got a package one day and I was like oh I forgot about this <laughs> so I got the conditioner I don't like the conditioner as much it, it wasn't hydrating enough and I went through it really quickly I have really thick hair so I tend to go through uh, leave-in conditioners and deep conditioners and regular conditioners a lot faster than the typical person uh, so I wasn't a huge fan of this and I wouldn't really recommend this though I really did like the shampoo I'll link up the video where I reviewed the shampoo if you're at all interested <laughs> Next, I have two deep conditioning treatments that I love. I love both of these, and they're on opposite ends of the price spectrum. The first one is the affordable option that I love. This is from Cantu. This is the Argan Oil Leave-In Conditioning Repair Cream. This thing is gigantic. 
it's huge it lasts me a good long time i can use this for a couple of months if i could if i deep condition weekly i love the smell it just it smells like argan oil it's light it's fresh um and it, it's not overpowering and this is just so conditioning and lovely i love using this and it's really really affordable i think i found this big container at target they do have a nice big selection at my local target so that's kind of where i tend to get them but i really really like this it's like my go-to affordable deep conditioner now and i have another one of these i don't think it's the argan oil one but i do have another one of these open in my shower right now so next is my favorite more expensive deep conditioning treatment and it's from lush this is the revive hair moisturizer this used to be called the rmb hair moisturizer and i've gone through several containers of that first off the scent is spectacular i love the scent so much like i would keep i already have a like a collection of all my lush pots because i haven't been able to go out I, I don't know if they're accepting pots in their recycling program because if you didn't know you can take five pots any containers back to lush and they will um take those and you get a free face mask out of it but ever since covid i don't know if they are <laughs> i don't know if they are uh, still doing that so i just have a huge collection of like lush containers right now so this is going to go into that lush container collection but i like keeping these just because they still smell amazing <sighs> i love it and this just this works so well on my curls like every time i use this as a deep conditioning treatment my curls look spectacular spectacular like i have like the best hair day ever after using this uh, but it's just really expensive so i don't get it all the time but i do love it enough to keep going back to it eventually okay moving on to stylers i have this uh curl cream from cantu this is the cantu conditioning creamy hair lotion this used to be a favorite of mine um, but recently i found that it hasn't been working as well for my hair anymore which is a bit odd for me i'd like some other leave-in conditioners better this one i feel like it was a bit too thick a bit too much for my hair and i don't know if that's because of the season i don't know if it's because of where my hair is right now but it, it wasn't working as well on my hair and also with the gels i've been preferring and with the oils that i've been using as well so while i really liked this before and i've gone through quite a few containers of it i it just i don't think it's what my hair needs right now so i finished this one up i don't think i have any more left so i probably won't buy this again anytime soon i finished two oils kind of recently the first is the ogx renewing argan oil of morocco for dry hair i like the way that i like using oils is mixing it with my leave-in conditioner and i scrunch that and prayer hands that through my hair before i go in with the gel and this oil i feel like it was a little too thick for what I prefer out of an oil. I think one of my favorite oils is a sample that I have in there right now in the bathroom, but uh, it's a little expensive to buy the full size. Uh, but this, it did its job. I only needed, the upside to this is I only needed a little bit of product, you know, to get through. So it did, it did last me a good long time, but I don't know if I would rebuy this. The other oil that I have, I liked, but it's technically just a scalp oil. It wasn't supposed to be for my full hair. And this is from Earth's Nectar Hair Care, and it's the Mint Leaves Scalp Oil. I bought this way back in the day, like a couple years ago, when I was having really bad problems with my scalp. If you have not been following my curly hair journey, um, when I first went curly girl, I kind of um, refreshed everything. I did nothing but like Diva Curl for like a year because I heard that was the best and I did mostly Diva Curl products and my scalp was just not having it. My scalp was dry and flaky and itchy and irritated and it just wasn't working. Then all the drama with Diva Curl came out and um, I think it was actually a little bit before then I actually stopped using Diva Curl at all and I switched to different products just to try different things and as soon as I stopped using Diva Curl products my scalp cleared up which uh, I have a video of a live stream where I kind of went through the whole Diva Curl thing if you missed that I'll throw it up in the cards but I have not touched Diva Curl since um, and before I figured out that's what was causing my scalp irritation I was looking everywhere like I was doing apple cider vinegar rinses I was doing scalp scrubs and I was looking at oils so that's why I bought this oil it was for that I mean it kind of sat in the back of my makeup or my hair care collection until now and I finally went in and I used it again. So I technically used this as a styling oil as opposed to a scalp oil but I actually really liked how this worked. I do think it's expensive. I, I spent the money on this because I was desperate to find a like scalp treatment that worked. This worked okay on my scalp but honestly after I stopped using Diva Curl I had no more issues with my scalp so that was kind of moot. Um, but I did like how this worked on the rest of my hair. Only thing is I hate the, the squirt spray nozzle for oils this should just be in a squeezy tube it should not have a spray um but i really like this and it, it smells really really nice it's mint i think a uh common denominator here is i really like mint for hair care but i really like this 
Oh, and Rex is bringing us another toy. He brought us two. Here's the third one. There we go. And he's bringing us another. <laughs> All right, the last two products we have in the hair care section are gels. So we have a previous favorite and a new favorite. <laughs> My previous favorite, which is just honestly at this point, it's just a little bit too difficult to find. And I've realized that with some of the other products that I've enjoyed using, it doesn't work well with them. And I tend to get some flaky bits in my hair. And that's the Girls With Curls Dippity Doo Curl Jelly. And I, I really used to like this. It was such like the perfect amount of hold it smelled really nice and it was affordable when you found it at Marshalls. The downside is that this is hard to find. You can't really get it online except for Amazon and at that price point it's like three times the amount you would find it at TJ Maxx or at Marshalls. Chunky boy, you gotta work with me here. But when you find it at TJ Maxx or Marshalls, it's $5.99. It's really really affordable but that's so hit or miss. You have no idea if you're gonna see it there. So. It, just how like unavailable it is it's, it, it is a bit difficult and it is hard to stock up because whenever I've gone I've only seen one or two tubs in the store at a time so an old favorite it did get dethroned by this other gel so I had heard about this gel for a bit in the natural hair community and I had never tried it but I see it everywhere I see it at TJ Maxx not TJ Maxx I see it at like CVS, at Walgreens, I see it at Target, and so I finally, you know, I was like, you know what, let me try it and see how it works. This is the Eco Style Gel, and this is specifically the olive oil one for all hair types. Um, I love the packaging, just having it just like actual like tub with a big lid works great. It doesn't really smell too much like anything, which is nice. I like a little naturalness. I like a little neutral scent. This is such a good gel. <laughs> I actually so I used this whole thing up and I bought another one I have the other one in my bathroom open right now it works so well especially with the new way that I've been styling my hair I've actually been doing um instead of finger coiling I stopped finger coiling because I used to finger coil everything and it just took so long now I've actually been using um either my hands and I rake through soaking wet hair and I scrunch the gel up in it or I'm trying the Denman brush method. I literally just bought my first Denman brush the other day and I'm gonna use it for the first time later today and I'm gonna style it, just combing it through and then I'm gonna comb the gel through and scrunch with that. Um, but I've been loving this gel and it's really, really affordable and I can find it literally anywhere. I can find it on Amazon, I can find it in Target, I can find it in Walgreens. So this is just a, a lot more accessible. Um, the price point is there and it just, it just works a lot better for me right now. So this is my current go-to gel. Oh my god, and we just did all of that, and that was just the hair care, guys. <laughs> we have three more sections to go. You know, it's not until you're not sitting in a chair that you realize just, like, how bad your posture is. My back's already hurting. All right, next. This whole bag is skin care and some nail care, so let's go. All right, let's do the nail care first because I only have a couple of products. The first is the Super Nail Pure Acetone. This has been my go-to acetone for taking off my nail polish. My nails are, like, almost constantly... Uh, covered in polish. This is just the quickest thing to take them off. I bought this in a six pack on Amazon and I think it's just the brand you could find like at Sally's. It's cheap and it, it works. So that's just, I think this is bottle two of the six and I, I've got a ton of these. That was one of the best purchases I've ever made because I couldn't find, like I saw like Simply Nail Logical has like those big bottles, like gallon size and I can't find those even at Sally's. So I, I just use this one. Next, I have two um, nail polish empties. One is just an unfortunate, like, complete dry out. This is from Hollow Taco, and I don't know if you can see, like, the nail polish leaked on the edges, and it just completely dried out on me. This was the original Not Milky White. I know they did just reformulate the nail polish, and I don't know if, like, issues with, like, that coming out was part of it, uh, but I really want to pick out or pick up the new reformulated one. So eventually I will, but not right now. Uh, my other empty is the Sech Vite or Sech Vite dry, fast dry top coat. This is my favorite go-to top coat. It literally completely dries down within two minutes. It's one of the best just like chip proof polish toppers I've ever used. Um, these are, I've really only found these on Amazon and at Walgreens and they're really hidden at Walgreens. I always find them for some reason like on the very top shelf and I have to like jump to get them but I really like these. I think they're a little pricey for polish but for me this is the one that's like worth it because it can go on top of any formula of polish and it just works really well. I have two makeup removers here. First is a free sample I got when I got my grandma a Mother's Day gift of a perfume. This is the Lancome B Facile the double action eye makeup remover and this works really well but I would never pay full price for this uh yeah that, that's about it so 
My current favorite go-to eye makeup and face makeup remover is just the Bioderma uh, Sensibo Bicellar Water, I think is what it is. I found these like in large containers on Amazon, that's just how I buy them now. Uh, but I think you can also find these at Target. And I think Target had the bottle that has the lid where you can like squish your eye makeup browns on top of it and it's easier. Uh, but I just really like this. This is my favorite. It takes off makeup without having to like scrub too hard at your eyes or at your face. So I like this a lot. I have two empty bliss sticks here. These are just my favorite chapsticks. They're really, really cheap and they work really well. I keep one of these like everywhere. I've got one in my purse. I've got one on my work desk. I've got one on my vanity. I just, I got them everywhere. Next, I have a little mini I got in a Sephora order. This is the Tarte Jelly Glaze Lip Gloss, I think is what it's called. And this lasted me a surprisingly long amount of time. It's basically a really tempted lip moisturizer. It worked really well, but it was just like too tinted for me for like everyday use when I'm wearing makeup because it was really, really dark red, which is a look. You could definitely wear that, but like on an everyday basis, the way I would wear a chapstick, I don't want a super dark red kind of cherry lip balm. Um, but I did like it surprisingly and again this little sample lasted me a few weeks of like everyday use so wow. Next I have a mini empty from Clinique. This is the acne solution gel. I've actually been breaking out a lot recently and my favorite way to just help uh, with my blemishes is to put this gel on as an overnight treatment. This actually used to look a, a lot worse yesterday and using that overnight treatment helped a ton. Uh, so I've got like a ton of these because I got them for free at work a long time ago. So I'm going to keep going through these little minis, but I really do like the Clinique gel. Next, I have my favorite go-to face cleanser. This is the CeraVe Hydrating Facial Cleanser for normal to dry skin. The lid is gone because I actually used the upside down. My grandma gave me the, um, the little squeezy lid things. It's, it's something you can put on top or you can stand it up on its own and then it becomes a squeeze bottle. I used that and uh, finished the entire bottle. I always get this because it's affordable, it's easily available, and it just it's nice and gentle on my skin, but it still makes my skin feel clean after I use it. Because I don't like it when something is gentle on my skin, but my face still feels dirty after using it. So this is that right balance between making me feel clean, but also being gentle on my skin. Basically the same thing, but in toner form. <laughs> this is the Thayer's Witch Hazel toner and this is the lavender scent. I love these toners. They're really really gentle um, enough for you to use AM and PM. There are other toners that I've used where they're so strong or drying you can only use them once a day. Uh, but this is really good for morning and night especially sometimes in the morning I don't feel like my face is dirty enough to need uh, a full cleanse so I like to sometimes just go straight in with my toner and then do my skincare on top of it in the morning and this is perfect for that. I've gone through more of these than I could count and they actually uh, through Influencer sent me a couple of bottles in PR so now I've got enough to last me a good long time. <laughs> All right so you want to guess guess how many bottles of the ordinary serums I have today. If you guessed five you are correct. <laughs> First off I have two of their Retinol. So I've got the Grand Active Retinoid 2% Emulsion and the Grand Active Retinoid 2% in Squalene. I've been trying out the retinols because I didn't have kind of a go-to retinol in my arsenal for a while. And I feel like these are a little too gentle. I'm, I'm slowly working my way up. This is the 2% in Squalene. I'm slowly working my way up to a higher percentage and maybe a less of like an emulsion. Um, but I feel like it's doing a little bit, but I feel like for my age and for my skin type, I could go into the stronger one. So I'm slowly working my way through them. I don't think I would rebuy these knowing that they weren't as strong as like I wanted them to be, but they're still really good. Next, I have the ethylated ascorbic acid 15%. This is a vitamin C derivative, and I, I love their vitamin C as they're a bit more expensive than the rest of their skincare that you'll find, or their serums at least. But that, that seems to be on par for good vitamin Cs in the skincare world. And by more expensive, I mean it's around 16-ish to $17 for a bottle as opposed to like eight or nine of the rest of their skincare items are. I've gone through, I believe, two of these already, and I have one of them open in my bathroom right now. So it's just really good vitamin C. I've been enjoying it and I feel like it does I feel it feels like it's doing something when I put it on my skin but it's not really harsh next I have two products that have been in I, I feel like every single one of my empties videos <laughs> ever um, that's the 100% organic cold press rose hip seed oil and the caffeine solution these are two products I use daily I use the caffeine solution on my under eyes in between up here on the top of my hooded lids and up here where I've got some little fine lines up there 
<laughs> the uh, rose hip seed oil I use daily. I mix it in with my moisturizer at night and I mix it in and I put it on and it feels extra moisturizing and I feel like it helps my moisturizer last longer throughout the full night. Ooh, and that's all the skincare. We did it. Two bags down, one, one basket to go. So in our last basket, we have body care and we have makeup. So since there's only a few body care items, let's do those first. First, I have two body spray empties. These are my favorite body sprays. Um, and they're from Bed Bath, not Bed Bath. They're from Bath and Body Works. Does anyone else always get Bed Bath and Beyond and Bath and Body Works mixed up? I do, I do it constantly. Um, but I have the Japanese Cherry Blossom and then the Rose Scents. I love buying these when they go on sale. They're typically $14 each, which is a bit steep. I like buying them. They tend to go on sale quarterly for like 3 to $5 each, and then I stock up. Because one of these, using them daily, lasts me at least four months. So it does last a good long time. Uh, and I like to pair this with an actual perfume, just my personal preference for fragrance. Uh, but they're really, really nice, and I like them, and I've got... Honestly, I think I liked the Japanese cherry blossom more than the rose scent and I do have another Japanese cherry blossom one in the bathroom right now that I use every day. Um, so I don't know if I'd buy the rose scent again, but it did really smell like roses. It was a good scent, but I think for me personally, I like the cherry blossom better. Also from Bath and Body Works, I have a, a lotion empty. This is from their aromatherapy line and this is the stress relief body cream. Oh, my favorite lotions are the ones that are technically labeled as body creams, not their lotions. If you buy a lotion from them, it tends to be thin and not as moisturizing. Their body creams are the best hand creams ever. I did the same thing. I buy these when they go on sale for five or six dollars each. I stocked up, I spent thirty dollars, and I got five of them, and they last me a good long time. I keep one in the bathroom and one at my work desk, so I'm constantly moisturizing my hands, and they're, they're just fantastic. I love the eucalyptus and spearmint is my favorite. They also have a really great one, which is eucalyptus and tea. I love that one. Oh, I can sit here to smell this all the time. It's so good. I love these. <laughs> Uh, speaking of lotion, we have two more lotions. The first one, <laughs> this was a, another gift that I gave Alvin before we moved in together. And then when we moved, I realized he never used it because he doesn't like lotions. What is it with guys or specifically guys that work in trades that don't want to use lotion? Like he needs it, but he won't use it. <laughs> I actually, so um, I did get him to start moisturizing. He starts, he's now using a cuticle oil and a hand cream nightly. So, ooh, big win, big win. Uh, but anyway, so this is the Hydrating Coconut Oil Body Lotion, and this is this in the scent Amber Wood, and this is, I think the brand is called Clean Guy. I believe this was a set I found at Marshall's for one of our first holidays together. Um, it smelled really nice. I think I used this more as like a leg lotion and an arm lotion as opposed to like a hand cream. Because for me, for it to be like a good hand cream, I like it to be like a thick actual cream. This was definitely a more liquidy kind of lotion that I would use more so on the rest of my body, but I liked it, used it, now it's an empty. <laughs> Probably wouldn't buy it again knowing that Alvin wouldn't use it, but it was an okay body lotion. Next I have a little sample. I believe this was the birthday gift from Sephora last year. This is the Brazilian Boom Boom Cream. I love the scent. I really like the lotion, but I would never pay full price. This is just so expensive. Have you seen how much these cost full price? It's ridiculous. <sighs> but they smell good. <laughs> And I do like it whenever I get the, I'll, like, if there's ever a chance for a free sample, I jump on it, but I, I'm not going to buy this. I'm not. Oh no, there's another fragrance one that I forget. Okay, so this is a little sample vial from Dossier. This is specifically their Gourmand Patchouli scent, which uh, is delightful. Um, but previously, so they no longer do this because they're actually cutting down on their plastic use, but they used to put in a, um, a little sample vial with each order so that if you got the perfume in the mail and you tried the sample and you didn't like it you could ship it back and get a full refund um, now they just offer full refunds on everything so even if you open up the main bottle you use it you don't like it full refund which I think is really good of them and they're cutting down on a lot of plastic waste but I went through and I was using all the little samples up before I was using the actual perfumes and I realized I was just recycling all the little bottles and I forgot to save them <laughs> and do them here but I did do a full dossier video if you missed it I'll throw it up in the cards uh, but I really like all the perfumes I've gotten and then I did um purchase a few on my own so I have been sent a few in PR and I've gone out and purchased like four of them on my own and I love them so much so yes I'm really glad that I found out about dossier Next up, Chunky Boy. It's okay. It's okay. Here, come here. So, next, I have my go to uh, 
I almost call this a conditioner. It's a deodorant. Ooh, I've been talking for a long time. This is the Dove and it's just the Invisible Solid. This is the Scent Fresh. I really like their cucumber scent instead, but this smelled all right. Um, I do use these, how often do I go through one of these? In like, I think a month is how long one of these lasts. I like buying them in the two packs at Target because normally I have coupons and the two packs are just worth it. Um, so this is my go-to. I've tried using like native, I hated native deodorant so much. It just, it was it gave me a rash I did not like it um, but this is the, the Dove I've been using it literally since I was a teenager yeah last for body care I have Dr. Teal's this is a, a bag of Epsom salt and this is the uh, lavender scent ever since moving and we've got this big nice tub I've loved taking baths so much um, so I got the Dr. Teal's I really like this I feel like I'm, I wish I could have gotten a bigger bag but I didn't see any at Target when we went I definitely will get this again um, I'm currently testing out the Amazon like house brand also has Epsom salt and I'm using that right now but I don't think I like it as much so I'll probably go back to the regular Dr. Teal's. Alright so that's it for body care last section finally we have makeup. We've got a few makeup empties. Let's go. First I have a Rimmel Stay Matte Powder. This is one of my favorite matte powders. One of my favorite pressed powders ever drugstore or higher end. It's so affordable. I always use this on sale at CVS and I pick it up literally whenever I get a chance. Next this one was so sad. One of my CoverGirl Exhibitionist Liquid Shadows dried out. This is the shade 2. I love these. I compared these to the um to the Stila's and then to some other affordable options and these are just so good. They're a little bit pricey for the drugstore but they're really really good liquid shadows so this is a sad, a sad day. And that's the only one that's dried out so far so I don't know if that was a, a glitch with that packaging because I've had five other ones and none of those are dried out yet. I got a little sample of a Lancome uh, foundation with that fragrance order that I mentioned earlier and this is the Tent Idol Ultra Wear. I'm glad I tried this out because this was a good size sample and honestly knowing this I don't want to buy the full size. I just feel like it's too expensive for what it is and uh, wasn't really a huge fan. It reminds me a lot of the um, a, like a not as great version of the Milk Makeup Sunshine Skin Tint is kind of what I was getting from there. So I'm glad I was able to get the free sample and try it out. but not in any rush to buy it. Ooh, this one was a surprising and exciting empty. So this is a Maybelline color tattoo. So this is a, a cream shadow in the shade Risk Maker, which is just a black. Um, but I used this as my brow pomade for like a year and it's finally like totally empty. <laughs> so I rebought this immediately. It's like my favorite brow product that I've ever tried. And it's not even a brow product. I like it. I like stark black brows and this was the best thing that I found for it. Um, so it is expensive for a cream shadow at the drugstore but if you're buying it not as a cream shadow but as a brow pomade that you use for a year, so affordable. And that's an airplane. Oh no, it's a helicopter. It's a news helicopter. <gasps> what happened? I'm nosy. Next I have an, another old favorite and this is the NYX Glitter Glue and this also is so affordable and lasts so long. I use this with so many different eyeshadow formulas and it's just my, it's my go-to. It's the best. So I just bought a new one and I think this one lasted me well over a year as well and so affordable. All right, next I have the NYX Control Freak Brow Gel. The only brow gel that I bought in like the last year. It's really good, really affordable, and it gives me crunchy brows. I like crunchy brows because my hair is thick and curly, and guess what? So are my eyebrow hairs. Like literally, if my hair if on the tail gets too long, it'll curl. I need something that'll keep them in place and keep them crunchy and just in the, the in line. They need to stay in line, and that's what the NYX does, and I love it. Next, we have two mascaras. The Milk Kush... Kush... Blah, 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 blah. The Milk Kush mascara. I so I first got this as a sample and I really really liked it but now using it as a sample again I'm, not, I'm honestly not a huge fan especially for how much money it is. So I'm glad I tried it again. Not a huge fan. What I am a huge fan of is this Essence Lash Princess mascara. This is the best. It's really really affordable. Rex you're underneath my tripod. <laughs> It's really, really affordable and it just works so well. It makes me look like it honestly like spreads and like lengthens my lashes. It just gives me such a great effect. And it's only $4.99. This first mascara ever. All right, I have two loose products. Loose, I can't talk anymore. I have two loose powders here. The first one is a oldie but a goodie. This is literally the Cody Airspun Loose Face Powder. The shade that works for me is naturally neutral. It does smell like grandma's house. 
but it's such a great loose powder and there's literally so much of it. It's so affordable and it's great. It's fantastic. Nothing wrong with this. I really like it. Now a dud. Um, I did review this in my last review roundup video. If you missed it, I'll throw it up in the cards. But this Tatcha Silk Powder was Dark, it was too dark for my skin tone. It was gritty, it was grainy, and it did not work well with any of the concealers or foundations that I've tried it with. So not a fan. Way too expensive for what it is. And I used up the whole thing just to give you a review. I didn't like it. Finally, at the end, we have two setting sprays. One really good and one absolute trash. I have the Milani Green Goddess setting spray. Now, I don't know if this is just because of the way I was using it, but typically when I have a Milani set make it last setting spray, it lasts me a little bit longer than this one did. So I don't think it has any less product, but I don't know if I just had to spray more of it to get the same effect. But I like the setting spray. I like the packaging. I like the scent. It was just really, really nice. Um, I don't know if I like this more than the regular Milani make it last setting spray because that's one of my Oh my god, I'm so upset. My battery literally died and I have like less than five minutes left to go. So I don't know where I cut off, but I really like this Milani Green Goddess setting spray. I just feel like it went a little bit faster than I'm used to for Milani setting sprays. And I don't think I like this more than the original Make It Last because that one is just such a great setting spray. It smells great. It's affordable. It's accessible. Um, so I, I do like this and I would be willing to buy this again, um, but probably not before I buy the original again. Rex has bought us more friends, more buddies, more buddies. All right, and our final product, finally, we have the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. This was trash, don't waste your money. It is so drying. Like, I've never seen a setting spray before where I spray it on my powdered face and I look drier. Even a matte setting spray, like I'm using a matte setting spray right now from NYX. And I spray that on and I get a nice flat finish, but I don't look like cakey and dry. That's what this gave me. Why? Why, Charlotte? Why would you do this to me? I hate it. It was so expensive and it was trash and like, I just, I didn't like it. Don't waste, please don't waste your money. All right, so that concludes me talking about empty products for well over an hour. I have no idea how long this is when it's edited, but thank you for watching and watching me spiral with the empties that I procrastinated on for uh, a few months. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down below, like always, what is the last product that you finished? And I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye. Rex, you wanna say bye? Say bye to everyone. Bye. You wanna show them all the toys you brought me while filming? All of these buddies. You can have them back now. <laughs> Say bye.